58 teams, representing four different countries, between them an average EPA of 38. 25 teams in the top 100 worldwide. Elite off-seasons are the highlight of the summer. Between the on-team project like turrets and elevators, teams turn to the events to watch the best in FRC push the limits of the game. Indiana Robotics Invitational and Cheese and Jams have both made names for themselves as the two premier off-season events in FRC, inviting teams to compete with and against the best of the best in high-octane matchups that we have only dreamed of in season. On this episode of Rewind, we're covering the history of the elite off-season event from Indiana to California and everything in between. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Hi, I'm Ari. I'm your guide through history and a mentor on Team 8085. I'm James. I'm the lead strategy and scouting mentor on Team 179. I'm Stanford, I'm a mentor on 2710 and a game announcer in Southern California. Along with our hosts, we have the pleasure of introducing Chris Foltz, Planning Committee Lead for the Indiana Robotics Invitational. Chris, you have quite the history with IRI. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got involved with this elite off-season? Sure. So, um, in addition to the IRI, I'm a lead mentor on CyberBlue Team 234. Um, my first IRI was when I went with the team to Kokomo. Uh, 2001 for the event. That was the second IRI. And shortly after that, uh, Andy Baker approached our team lead and a couple other team leads about moving the event to Indianapolis to be able to get, you know, bigger venue and room uh, for more teams because it was, it was getting pretty popular. Um, so our team got involved and then I slowly, um, as mentors changed and people came and went, um, got more and more involved with the overall planning and execution. Um, now it's me uh, with Andy Baker on Team 45 and then Jeff Smith from Team 1024, who are the primary leads. Um, we all kind of have our own expertise areas, um, but come together and make sure everything works. Um, one interesting point, so we were looking for somewhere to have the IRI and ended up choosing Lawrence North High School because that school system was looking to start a team um, and thought hosting an event there uh, would get their school and community support um, around having a team. And also they have two huge gymnasiums and both of them are air conditioned, which is a great thing to have in Indiana in July. Right outside Indiana's capital city of Indianapolis, stationed in a high school gym is a competition that FRC teams apply to year after year for a chance to compete. With fierce competition and a fiercer sense of camaraderie, world champions like 254, 118, 1114, and so many more develop their world-class status here at the Indiana Robotics Invitational. In May of the year 2000, IRI was founded as Hoosier Havoc in Kokomo, Indiana. It all started when Team 45, the Technocats, got an invite to one of the three off-season events run in 1999, Rumble at the Rock, an invite-only event with much less pressure than in-season events. The next year, IRI started with a plywood field, a homemade FMS, and ran the event off of an Excel document. 21 teams attended in the first year, and 28 the second. By 2002, the event had outgrown the space and moved to Indianapolis. FRC teams 234 and 393 agreed to help host the event, while soon-to-be-formed FRC team 1024 agreed to be the facility host at their school. 2008 was the first year of the true Invitational, where teams had to apply for an opportunity to compete. In 2009, over 100 teams from the US and Canada registered for 72 open positions. Elimination scores averaged above in in-season records. The world record was set in qualifications. Teams were drafted into four team alliances years before the backup bot would become standard at the world championship. The three seed beat the reigning world champions in the finals. It was the event that would set the stage for future IRIs to come. So what differentiates these invitational off seasons from other events? James, start us off. One of the key things that really does separate the invitational off seasons is the history associated with them. For a lot of teams, winning IRI is almost as good as winning championships and might even be better than winning a division. 
the atmosphere at these events is also very, very different than it is at champs with less teams and less on the line for being world champions, even if you do find it as a very important win. There's a lot more friendly atmosphere, a lot more joking around, and there's a lot less stress from the high class teams where if you have a bunch of people constantly coming to your pit to look at your robot and then you're at an event with four or 600 teams as compared to an event with only 60 something, you can kind of spend more time telling everybody what's going on and more time just overall having a personal experience with other teams and even be able to ask about their robot, even if it's not there. Another nice thing about these events, especially classic IRI, was you got to see the best of the best play together, which didn't even really used to happen at Champs because of the divisions. By not having the divisions diluting, you actually do get to see all of the best teams compete at the same time on the same field and see how they really do stack up against each other. And then another nice thing that kind of separates IRI and Chessy, at least to me personally, is IRI has always felt like what happens at a, when you no longer have the stress of competition season and you have a whole month or a month and a half extra to make that robot you had even better. Compared that to Chessy, <clears throat> which I feel actually is much more of a showcase of backup robots and clones. Like when you've actually now seen what amazing robots look like, what are the best of the best teams think was the best design and what are they looking at possibly implementing in the future? Yeah, and, and to your point about the kind of differing stress level and vibes of the competition, especially out here uh, in the West, um, where we're still on regionals, the kind of attitude of all these teams that are going there, even if it's extremely competitive, it's not a win or die scenario. So they are so happy just making it to the next round, making winning that playoff match, winning that qual match. Whereas at our regionals, it's, as it gets more and more competitive and more and more cutthroat, it's really starting to become a less fun experience where teams are really trying to just win. And at the these kind of off seasons, you get to see everyone both having as much fun as possible, but also playing as absolute hard as they can. So that's also something that's really fun to, to watch with these. We'd like to thank AnyMark and AnyMark.com for their continued support of fun content. AnyMark.com is your one-stop shop for all your competition robotics needs. Featuring over 200 years of combined experience, Animark has now been in business for 20 years, servicing first teams and beyond. From electrical and mechanical, anything you may need, go to Animark.com to see how they can help your team and to get some of the best quality parts and the superior service that your team deserves. IRI has always aimed to play the game at the top of the upper echelon level. But to do that, the game often itself gets in the way. IRI has circumvented this by literally changing the rules. Rule changes range from up point thresholds, adjusted point values, or in rare cases, no change at all. This, this style of elite competition has progressed across the country over the last decade, with the best of the West fall competition, Chessy Champs, starting in 2014. Founded on the principles of having the field respond the right ways at the right times and having a working FMS, Chessy Champs brought the elite event to the West Coast. With the addition of live commentators, Chessie integrated a sense of professional sport for viewers of the event, while maintaining experience as a priority, even before this was adopted by FIRST at the championship event. Awards were integrated into elimination matches, signs were clear, volunteers were team-oriented, and there were at least two instances of freeborn dogs. This year, we're seeing the debut of another elite off-season, the All-Star Invitational, the Alliance-based competition in Michigan in late summer. Each of the events has had an impact on the elements of the first robotics competition. And seeing where these pioneers take us is part of the reason that we all keep coming back. What keeps you coming back to these events to watch or attend in, or even Chris in your case, to run it every year? Stanford, start us off. Well, one thing that kind of keeps it new and kind of fun to watch every single year is a lot of these events are trying out new stuff with the competition. And that's always something that's really fun to watch because you're watching a very high level competitive environment try something totally new. Um, so IRI has stuff like 14 alliances, cards, and, you know, Chessy the past couple of years has got new radios and five ranking points. Like all watching all that stuff play out, definitely one of my favorite things to watch at all of these. For me, it was a lot of the, especially when two champs came around, being able to see the people who never got to really play together 
finally get to actually interact with each other. With North and South split, especially with the district teams, you never got to interact with them because everything's so insular. And even once two champs went away, one of at least my personal coolest memories in the post-COVID area with the off seasons was IRI 2022 when OP and our sister team Spam wound up winning the whole thing. You have a team from Ontario and a team from South Florida who haven't really been able to play together for years, and they were able to come together and make an alliance that really only can exist at either champs or IRI. Chris, what yeah. keeps you coming back? Yeah, well, for me, um, first, um, the teams that come to compete because we're able, um, because it's an invitational, because of the application process, we um, put a lot of work and effort into picking the strongest performing teams from each year. Um, and be as objective as, as we can with that. Um, so you know you're always getting not not the absolute best teams in the world, but most of the top teams um, that are able to come. So you know the level level of play, the level of competition, and for us, you know being in Indiana, uh, teams that we normally don't see and compete with because of district or even when we go to a regional. So um, for us as a team, it's great uh, to compete and be able to talk to all these teams. Um, the other that keeps me coming back is the volunteers. We have a lot of volunteers that every year are coming back. Um, we do our best to take care of them, feed them well, give them cool bling. Um, but we know without them, we can't do the event that we do. So that's a big part. Um, and the other is, so we do a lot of um, outreach type things with a charity auction and with backpacks. So backpack Phil, for an elementary school student, as part of the entry fee. And we always get one and a half to two times more backpacks than teams that are coming in. So, you know, you know, teams are taking it very serious. We have really cool stuff that's brought into the auction, and then people are incredibly generous in their bids. So just that whole very competitive on the field, really fun and exciting in the pits, just talking to people. But then the, the outreach part. Um, off the field is what makes it a lot of fun as well. This year's Indiana Robotics Invitational will be held July 12th and 13th in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Chessie Chance will be held September 28th and 29th in San Jose, California. As with all invitationals, these events are great because the teams that go to them are dedicated to the competition, to their robots, and to achieving the highest level of play possible. They're sure to show off the, the ceiling of this game like we haven't seen before and showcase the capability of this game's top robots. But until then, thanks Chris, James, and Stanford for the rewind. Make sure you subscribe to Fun's YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the show, give it a like and let us know in the comments your favorite moments from these events or any other topics you want to see covered next time on Rewind. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.